Jesus speaks to America in 2023. And here's what he says. The real Jesus of the Bible says, Therefore I say to you, verse 22, Take no thought for your life. What? This is revolutionary. This is radical. This is extreme. Yes, it is. Take no thought for yourself. What? What you shall eat? What? Some of y'all can't think past your next meal. Who are you going to sleep with? Take no thought for your body. For what you shall put on. Clothes. Material. Raiment. Take no thought. Take no thought. He didn't say take some thought. Kiranda, let me sit down and teach. Bronda la vakire de celta bakuro to celtica raduski. He didn't say take no thought. He didn't say take some thought. He said take no thought. And you call yourself a Christian, but all you can think about is what you're going to wear. Your clothes are your idol. You call yourself a Christian, but you're a foodie. All you can think about, well, I was a foodie before they ever called it foodie, but anyway, it's all you can think about is food or what you're going to drink. Life is more than meat, the body more than raiment. Consider the ravens, they need to sow to reap. And he went on and he, he said, look at the flowers. Look at the birds. And then he said, oh, ye of little faith in verse 28. And he said in verse 29, seek not what you shall eat or what you shall drink. Neither be you of doubtful mind for all these things do the nations of the world seek. But rather, verse 31, seek the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. Ladies and gentlemen, number one, a lesson from a perishing farmer. But I want you to flip your Bible over to Luke 15 and starting in verse 11. I, uh, and we're going to look at point two, very simply a lesson from a prodigal son. I, uh, I tried to preach this in New York City not too long ago. And it didn't, I didn't do a very good job communicating the message. And I'm sorry for that. I was distracted. I was trying to do 20 different things. But my attention today is focused like a laser, a lesson from a prodigal son. Verse 11, he said, a certain man had two sons. The younger, I'm going to go through this fast. The younger said to his father, father, give me the portion of the goods that falleth me. And he divided unto the living end. Not many days after the younger son gathered together and took his journey into a far country and there he wasted his substance with riotous living. So many of you are running from God. You know what I'm preaching is right. You know the word of God is right. You know what the Bible teaches. You know what your preacher says. You know what they say at Sunday school. You know right from wrong. Your conscience is bothering you. You're convicted of your sin, but yet you're not converted. I said your conscience is bothering you. You're convicted of your sin but you're not converted and you're wasting your life with riotous living and you spent all a mighty famine rose, rose in the land and he went and he joined himself to a citizen of that country and long story short he ended up with the pigs he ended up a little Jewish boy feeding the pigs like somebody said it don't get no worse than that But you know, you got to hit rock bottom in life. You got to hit skid row. You got to hit rehab, drugs and alcohol. You got to realize the fact that you have a bondage and a captivity and an addiction and say, I am helpless in the 12 steps and I am powerless and I need a higher power. Your higher power is the most high God, Jesus Christ, who hung and bled and died on a cross, destroying the power. Jesus, the King of Kings and, and, and Lord of Lords, Jesus rose from the dead so you can arise. Jesus rose from the dead so you can arise. And he came to himself, verse 17. He said, you know the story. How many hired servants of my father have bread and I'm perishing? And he went to his father and he said, Father, I've sinned 
against heaven. He prayed a sinner's prayer. I have sinner's prayer. Anybody who says sinner's prayer is not scriptural is a biblical and a scriptural illiterate. He said, I have sinned against heaven. Sinner's prayer before thee. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired servants. And you know the rest of the story. I'm just going to summarize. He decided to come to God. I'm coming home. Coming home. Never more to roam. Open wide thine arms of love. Lord, I'm coming home. And he was coming home. And he was coming home. And he was he was walking fast. And he was afraid of how God would react. But when he saw his father, his father was running. His father was running. His father was running. His father was running. God ran. God ran. God's running to you. You might be running away from God tonight. But God Almighty is running to you with arms of love. With arms of mercy. With arms of compassion. Glory to God. Forgiving your sin as if it never happened. Separating you from your sin. As far as the east is to the west. Or your sins, though they be scarlet, shall be as white as snow. A lesson from a prodigal son. And you'll notice, he didn't bring anything in his hands. He left his pig pen. Oh, I feel this right now. You got to leave your pigs in the pig pen. You don't bring your sin to Almighty God. You don't come to God just as I am. No! You come to God, a repentant sinner. Nothing, nothing, nothing in my hands I bring. Nothing in my hands I bring. Simply to the cross do I cling. I will cling. To the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Look, uh, look, Samson didn't bring anything in his hands. David didn't bring anything in his hands. Jonah didn't bring anything in his hands. The thief on the cross uh, didn't bring anything. And you got to leave your sin, separate you from sin. Come out of your pig pen. Come out of your pig pen for the last time and come to God. Come to God, a repentant sinner, full of faith and belief. Hallelujah. A lesson. A lesson from a prodigal son. And number three, turn your Bible to Luke 16, starting in verse 19. Luke 16. And starting, ain't this good? Hallelujah. Luke 16. And starting in verse, I got to read 14. Jesus was always, 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 without fail, Jesus was battling the Pharisees. Jesus was fighting the Pharisees. They were attacking him. They were accusing him. The accuser of the brethren lying. I mean, they had the Antichrist talking points, didn't they? And the Pharisees who were covetous. Here again, the sin of covetousness. Wanting what you don't have. The Bible says I'm the, uh, in the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want. But they were covetous. Heard these things and they derided him. But Jesus answered, Ye are therefore they who justify yourself before men, but God knows your hearts. That's what a lot of y'all are trying to do. Justify your sin. Explain away your sin. Excuse your sin like you're the exception and the exemption. You're not. God knows your heart. God knows every website you go to. God knows every porn site you look at. God knows every app and hookup app you go to. God knows every time you even think a, a cuss word. God knows the, the perverse perversion of perverts. God knows. You can't hide from God. You can't run from God. The prodigal son tried. It didn't work. God knows your heart. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. And then he talks about divorce. Whoever puts away his wife and marries another commits adultery. Are you listening, America? And whoever marries her that is put away from a husband, I don't care what America says about divorce and remarriage. 